Good afternoon. Thanks, Deborah, for the, for the introduction. As you know, I am the president of the National Committee on Children's Environment and Health. It is a scientific independent committee appointed by the Council of Ministers, and it is supported financially only from Minister of Health. Our prime goal is to provide scientific support and advice to the Minister of Health and all the ministers and regulators. We don't have any executive power. We have a mandate to ra raise awareness and integrate the prevention and precaution into policies and everyday life. And more importantly, we have the task to ensure that we have prompt responses to emerging threats and not fully established but well-documented risks like the EMF we discussed today. And why just a committee is essential? Because the experience shows that risk management and legislation in many cases fail to take or take delayed action to protect appropriate the health of infants and children. And why is this happening? For many reasons, uncertainties or scientific ignorances, controversies, or economic interest. Examples, environmental tobacco smoking, synergistic or cocktail effects of chemicals, biological effects of EMF RF. There is only one interim option to protect children from potential risk awareness, precaution, and reduction of the exposure. And we focus primarily on indoor environment where the children are spent most of their uh, time, 60 to 90 percent, depending on their age. And we know that minimization of exposure and risk is mostly dependent on parents' and teachers' attitudes. It is less dependent on legislative measure. So the target population for us are parents, doctors, teachers, and children, and of course, media. We follow an holistic, we do an, a sort of holistic intervention. First of all, we try whenever possible to have pilot investigation to collect information and data on Cyprus reality. This can support very much the awareness campaigns, can influence most the policy level, and can raise awareness. And of course, can be used also for media, uh, press, TV, and radio. And top on top of this, we have education programs addressing pediatricians, healthcare providers, teachers, and parents. We use many, many uh, tools. Uh, we have our website. We have the videos. You have seen one the first day. We are going to see another one at the end of my talk. We have seminars. We have uh, uh, every month interventions in TV and radio stations, and we issue also a lot of material. The, the, our uh, target is to make the people first to understand, and second, to learn how to avoid and minimize exposure. And we have issued a book, which is now under revision. This has 15 chapters covering various issues of um, environmental factors impact the ch which can impact the children's health. Two chapters, the new chapters, are devoted to the use and the risk of these uh, mobile and electronic devices. Examples of some of our uh, campaigns is campaign in relation to various issues of chemicals, including the energy saving lamp, which uh, contains mercury. Uh, face painting, baby care cosmetics, the environmental tobacco smoking, which is a continuous uh, campaign, and now is the mobile phone and wireless technology. But before I go further, I would like just to highlight what it comes also from all our discussions. We are, we are faced a scientific controversy, and probably this would be the case for the next years. So we have the one thought of schools with only thermal consideration, thermal effects. Increp and DC limits are based on that. It, by definition, address of only short-term exposure and uh, happening at very high level of energy uh, at that per square meter level. And you have the other school of thought, uh, which is related to non-thermal biological effects supported by thousands of peer-reviewed studies. And these are occurring even uh, low, as low as one million times below the existing limits. And this slide shows you uh, what is the situation in terms of the limit of increase on the top, 
And then we have the limits which have been developed since 2007 uh, up to now. In, and those limits are rather criteria, not limits, criteria based on the biological, of no biological effect level. This is the, the principle. You can see that we go down and down as new emerging research appears. And nowadays we consider these levels not to be exceeded in order to, uh, let, us have, uh, let us say, we have adequate protection of our children. And many people argue that biological effects happen every day, but that's not necessarily means that they translated to health impacts. But the answer is opposite. This biological effect can lead to adverse health effect if exposure is chronic, is continuous, like the one we experience now. Why? Some of the argument taken from the Bioinitiative report they interfere with normal body processes, they disrupt homeostasis, prevent the body from healing damaged DNA, produce immune system imbalances, cause metabolic resorption, and many other things. And there, uh, after this, we have essential body processes which can be ev eventually disabled and led to pervasive impairment of metabolic, uh, metabolic neurological and reproductive functions as we found already in many new studies. And why we address this technology? Primarily, f the reason is the, uh, the unique exposure that we experience in 21st century, which is uh, affecting entire population. It is multiple, intermediate, and it starts and continues through vulnerable stages of the life of a child from embryo to adolescence. And here I, I put all the argument why we need to address this wire technology today, now. Uh, the first two uh, legislation and exposure already, I, I refer to them. We have on top the certain safety of the technology. Emerging devices without pre-market testing, especially for their long-term effects on children. And then we have people who are not adequately informed about the risk and may have erroneous perception of safety of, of using this technology. Whilst, on the other hand, we have good practices and alternatives to reduce the exposure. And how you are addressing this? Again, we focus on house and school for the reason I explain. We have at policy level interventions and, advi and providing advice. We have an open dialogue still. Is go ongoing dialogue to avoid wives in the School of Cyprus with the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health. We are happy to say that we cooperate very closely with parliamentary committees and with the Environment Commissioner in person in this. It supports very much our um, efforts. And we, on parallel, we try to train and educate the pediatricians because they are very close to the families. They can influence the families. We, we also focus on children and teachers. And we focus very much on parents. These are the most uh, difficult audience in our, uh, in our efforts, and I explain to you in a minute. Uh, what we have achieved uh, one year ago is to have one uh, campaign, our one is raised to reduce exposure and protect, protect children from EMF. This campaign was launched by the Minister of Health in a press conference, and we are happy to have here uh, Minister of Education and Minister of Environment, and the Envi uh, Minister of Communication, Education, and the Environment Commissioner. And what was the outcome of this event is that everybody <laughs> accept the need to protect the children, but we got a strong support and committed for precautionary action by the Minister of Health, which is uh, always supporting our efforts. Key suggestions that um, we provide from our committee to the Minister of Health, because we believe that we have to act now, is uh, we said that we acknowledge that changing the basic legislation is very difficult and will take time. So we propose in the meantime, based on the precautionary principle, that biological relevant criteria like the ones I have shown, 
be applied complementary to the existing limits, at least for the evaluation of children exposure, to promote supplementary regulation based on the model of France legislation so that we prohibit uh, wi and mobile phones in kindergartens elementary school at least and put restrictions to secondary school and to raise, uh, to strengthen their awareness campaign and via school medical services students should be monitored for any electromagnetic hypersensitivity symptoms. And a snapshot of suggestions in memo, an extended memo, I would say, we sent to the Minister of Education on the issue of Wi-Fi. First of all, we questioned very much the necessity of the Wi-Fi and that it should be avoided. Wi-Fi should be applied only when there is no other solution and under restrictions and prerequisites. We, uh, the minister, uh, Ministry of Education was at the point to, uh, to go to the process to, uh, for tenders to Wi-Fi all the school of Cyprus. So we ask Minister, please, do a pilot implementation first, evaluate this, and based on the results, then you can make your decision. And how this pilot should be worked started from the highest class with a restricted application, not a full coverage in the school, educated students and teachers on the risk. This can be should be followed by evaluation of exposure under realistic conditions and based on biological reference criteria in addition to the legal limit, do, because we know that they do not cover the effects on children. Monitoring of any symptoms of a high electro sensitivity. We still uh, are waiting for the answer on this memo, but we are happy to say that still till now the process didn't start, at least. Awareness reigns for the parents. This is a very difficult task because most of them, they have wrong perception. And we, our aim is to um, remove this, uh, to correct this perception. And I will show you how we did it, a few examples. We uh, work, mythos is a Greek word, but I think everybody understands what is me it means. It means something which is not real and erroneous perception versus emerging evidence. Mythos number one, when devices are working with limits of ECRIP are safe. This is what everybody believes. And we said that these limits are not adequate and I don't go further because I already expressed what is happening. Effects of DNA, only the ionized radiation can affect the DNA. The reality is that we know today from a, a lot of literature a research that can EMF can destroy via oxidative mechanism, and not only, it can also affect DNA repairing mechanisms like melatonin. So it's another illusion about the safety. And uh, about wife because the energy emitted is relatively uh, low, they are safe. This is what people believe. And we said this, this is true, but why if we have pulses and peak of very high intensity because they transfer information. Exposure duration can be very long for some hours up to 24 hours. The user connected to a Wi-Fi can receive radiation similar as if he is at the distance of 50 to 100 feet, uh, 50 meters from a mast. The people are afraid. They don't go on the mast, but they have the mast in their home. Wi-Fi can also cause passive exposure to any bystander and other non-users. And Wi-Fi in school, I like this picture taken from Wi-Fi in school in Australia. It shows how it looks in a classroom with 30 computers and routers and whatever. So each student is exposed to its, only, uh, to its own, uh, let us say, uh, exposure from his own computer, but it has also a passive exposure from all computers which are around him. This is the reality in the classroom and this is, has never been tested. And uh, there are a lot of organizations um, uh, claiming at, against Wi-Fi. I just want to show what the Austrian Medical Chamber says. Wi-Fi can lead to, to high microwave exposure and of children and children, which might increase the burden of oxidative stress which then 
slow down the energy production, especially in brain cells, and may lead to concentration difficulties and memory problems in certain individuals. The Austria Medical Association recommends Wi-Fi free environment. And this is the legislation coming from, uh, from France. It's a, it's a landmark legislation, I would say. And another mythos is related to the wireless baby monitors. This, they think, is safe, is no problem. The reality is, again, that you have a lot of radiation uh, on the head of the child, very close to its head. So there are alternatives. There are wires or analog type, but always at a distance of two meters. Basic keys to reduce exposure, keep a distance from the source, use hands-free, reduction of the exposure duration and frequency. The usage must be inverted proportional to the age of the child. Opt for wireless, not wireless. Look for schools which are wire Wi-Fi free. They activated all Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, 4G, when non in use, when pregnant or child are nearby, and always in the night. And finally, children with existing neurological problems that include cognitive, learning, attention, memory, or behavioral problems, as well as with chronic diseases like cancer, must be provided with wired learning environment. Schools and playgrounds should not have this symbol of free Wi-Fi. Rather, we should look for schools and places where we, we see this symbol. We love children. We are free from Wi-Fi. And some final closing remarks I would like to share with you. I think and I believe after also this conference I am convinced that we know enough to apply precaution and to ensure our children's future. We must push for safer regulator adjust, adjusted to children's specificities. In the interim, biological relevant criteria should be applied. Instead of requiring from the society the absolute proof of damage, we should demand proof of safety from the industry itself. Thank you very much. <laughs> our website, which is also shown on our slides. Uh, of course, you don't have many things in English yet. Σύμφωνα με τον Παγκόσμιο Οργανισμό Υγεία, η ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπεται από τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, τα Wi-Fi και άλλε ασύρματε συσκευέ είναι πιθανώ καρκινογόνα για τον άνθρωπο. Ο πιθανό αυτό κίνδυνο είναι ακόμα μεγαλύτερο για το έμβριο, αφού αυτό αναπτύσσεται καθημερινά και είναι ιδιαίτερα ευάλωτο. Μία νέα ζωή μεγαλώνει μέσα μου και έχω ευθύνη να την προστατέψω. Έχω ευθύνη να διασφαλίσω ότι το παιδί μου θα αναπτυχθεί σωστά και θα γεννηθεί υγιέ. Λαμβάνω σοβαρά υπόψη τις συστάσεις των ειδικών και με απλά και αποτελεσματικά μέτρα προστατεύω το παιδί μου από τους πιθανούς κινδύνους. Περιορίζω σημαντικά την χρήση του κινητού τηλεφώνου και έχω απενεργοποιημένες τις προσβάσεις στο διαδίκτυο. Όταν χρειαστεί να το χρησιμοποιήσω, το τοποθετώ πάντα μακριά από την κοιλιά μου. Χρησιμοποιώ ενσύρματη σύνδεση στον υπολογιστή μου για να έχω ασφαλή πρόσβαση στο διαδίκτυο. Αποφεύγω την παθητική έκθεση κρατώντας αποστάσεις από αυτούς που χρησιμοποιούν κινητό τηλέφωνο ή άλλες ασύρματες συσκευές. Στο σπίτι ενεργοποιώ τις ασύρματες συνδέσεις μόνο όταν είναι ανάγκη και τις κρατώ πάντα κλειστέ κατά τη διάρκεια της νύχτας. Η ζωή και το μέλλον του είναι στα δικά σου χέρια. Έχεις ευθύνη και μπορείς να το προστατεύσεις. Τα παιδιά μα εκτίθενται καθημερινά σε ένα ηλεκτρονικό νέφο το οποίο δημιουργείται από την ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπουν τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, tablets και οι συνδέσει μέσω WiFi και άλλα παρόμοια. Η ακτινοβολία αυτή, σύμφωνα με τον Παγκόσμιο Οργανισμό Υγεία, είναι πιθανώ καρκινογόνα για τον άνθρωπο. Σύμφωνα με νεότερε έρευνε, η ακτινοβολία αυτή 
είναι πιθανό να προκαλέσει και άλλες σοβαρές επιδράσεις στην ανάπτυξη και λειτουργία του εγκεφάλου, του αναπαραγωγικού και άλλων συστημάτων του εμβρίου και του παιδιού, να προκαλέσει καταστροφή των νευρικών κυττάρων και του DNA, διάσπαση της προσοχής, διαταραχές στη μάθηση και άλλες νευρολογικές παθήσεις. Τα παιδιά είναι πολύ ευάλωτα. Μπορούμε όμως σε σημαντικό βαθμό να τα προφυλάξουμε από ένα σοβαρό κίνδυνο. Φτάνει να μάθουμε πώς. Αφού μας αγαπάτε, γιατί μας αχθυνοβολείτε με τα Wi-Fi και τα κινητά σας τηλέφωνα. Έχουμε δίκιο μας στην υγεία και πρώτοι εσείς μπορείτε και πρέπει να μας προφυλάξετε. Στη βάση της αρχής της προφύλαξης, το Συμβούλιο της Ευρώπης, το Ευρωκοινοβούλιο, επιστήμονες, ιατρική και εκπαιδευτική σύλλογη στην Ευρώπη συμβουλεύουν ότι θα πρέπει να μειωθεί η έκθεση των παιδιών στην ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπουν τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, tablets και οι συνδέσεις μέσω Wi-Fi, ιδίως στο σπίτι και στο σχολείο. Η έκθεση των παιδιών σε ηλεκτρονικό νεφος εγκυμονεί κινδύνους. Η χρήση των κινητών και συσκευών Wi-Fi από παιδιά μικρότερα των 14 ετών πρέπει να αποφεύγεται. Προφυλάξτε την υγεία και το μέλλον των παιδιών σας. Το ίδιο ισχύει και για την έγκυο. Οι έφηβοι ποτέ δεν βάζουν το κινητό στο υπνοδωμάτιο τους, στις τσέπες τους, στα μπράτσα ή κοντά στο στήθο τους. Πάντα χρησιμοποιούν hands-free και κρατούν το κινητό μακριά από το σώμα τους. Αξιοποιώ την τεχνολογία σωστά, γνωρίζω τους κινδύνους και δεν εξαρτώμαι από αυτή. Χρησιμοποιώ ενσύρματη σύνδεση για τον υπολογιστή του σπιτιού μου και ενεργοποιώ το Wi-Fi και τα δεδομένα κινητής τηλεφωνίας μόνο όταν χρειάζεται και ποτέ όταν τα παιδιά μου είναι κοντά. Δεν χρησιμοποιώ κινητό τηλέφωνο στο αυτοκίνητο όταν τα παιδιά μου βρίσκονται σε αυτό. Η έκθεση στην αρχινοβολία είναι πολύ μεγαλύτερη. Προστατεύω πάντα τα παιδιά μου. Η Γαλλία ήδη με νόμο απαγόρευσε τη χρήση Wi-Fi σε παιδικούς σταθμούς και σε χώρους όπου φιλοξενούνται παιδιά κάτω των τριών χρόνων. Επιτρέπει ελάχιστη χρήση στα σχολεία κάτω από αυστηρούς περιορισμούς. Στον υπηαγωγείο, στα σχολεία και στο σπίτι περνάμε τουλάχιστον το 75% του χρόνου μας. Απαιτούν μια ασφάλεια χωρίς αχτινοβολίες από Wi-Fi κινητά και άλλες ασύρματες συνδέσεις. Υγεία είναι δικαίωμα. Είμαστε στερείτε. Δεν έχουμε το δικαίωμα να ρισκάρουμε την υγεία των παιδιών μας αναμένοντας παθητικά τους άλλους να κάνουν κάτι. Ας ξεχάσουμε την είναι για μας και ας τους χαρίσουμε το καλύτερο δώρο. Την υγεία τους, μετατρέποντας το σπίτι και το σχολείο σε όαση προστασίας. Το σπίτι μου είναι η όαση αγάπης και ασφάλειας. Σβήνω τα Wi-Fi και άλλες ασύρματες συνδέσεις όταν δεν χρησιμοποιούνται και κυρίως όταν τα παιδιά είναι στο σπίτι και τα κλείνω πάντοτε το βράδυ. Αξιοποιώ το κουμπάκι on off. Είναι τόσο απλό να μειώσω το χρόνο αχρίαστης έκθεσης. Επενδύω στην υγεία των παιδιών μου μακροχρόνια. Η ζωή και το μέλλον τους είναι στα δικά μας χέρια. Δώστε στα παιδιά ένα μοναδικό δώρο ζωής. Την υγεία τους.